Welcome to Inspiring Elders, a 13-part documentary produced and presented by Marie-Angeline Lascaux with the support of the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland. What happens physiologically and psychologically as we grow older? What is the role of an elder in our society? What does positive aging mean? What part does nutrition play in remaining fit and healthy? And why is it so important to remain active in our later years? Why do so many of our elders engage in music, art, dance, poetry? Can we start a new careers in our 50s and 60s? What is the role of spirituality? And what does it mean to live a fulfilled life? All these questions and more will be answered by a panel of experts, including a professor of gerontology, medical doctors, an Ayurvedic doctor, a homeopath, a psychologist, dancers, writers, artists, teachers, healers, all of whom share a passion for life and a commitment to remain engaged with the younger generation. In this program, Anna Chu, Tom Wynn, Fred Walker, Dr. Don Brennan, Joe Cluxton, Mary Brady, Leslie Andelman, Lucy Johnson, Ailish Kelly, Dr. Eric Dilworth, Gabrielle Kirby, Dolores Whelan, Sister Rachel and Annette Peard share what living a fulfilled life means to them. Could you tell me what it means to you to live a fulfilled life? To be who I am, to be actually... I, I believe that each one of us are given certain gifts when we're born. That is how we express our uniqueness. The talents may be shared with many other people, but everybody has their unique expression of them. And when I feel most fulfilled is when I'm doing things that I know are part of my talents, you know. I, like caring for people, I, I, that's always been part of my life. I actually, I thought I would never be able to stand up in front of a group and teach, but I actually love it. I feel fulfilled because I feel I'm sharing knowledge and I'm sharing wisdom and I'm learning from them and they're learning from me, hopefully. So to feel fulfilled is really to express who I am in the world with myself and with other people. I am very interested in spirituality as, and, and it is central to my life. I have come to acknowledge now is that, that the bodies that we have been given are the physical expression of the spirit that we are. So if I look after uh, my body, my spirit will rejoice, will be happy. It's great to be older. We can live life having learned from our experiences and are mature enough to stop playing the mind games, no longer conforming because we should, but be free to be who we were meant to be. So, I have done my sixty odd years, I've had my share of pleasures and pain. Some of my good friends have already moved on. The one thing I have really learned is to love life, trust it, love yourself. After all, isn't true love the only medicine? I'm just coming up to 57 years old. I certainly became aware of a major transformation that was happening for me about the age of 50. And it allowed me to acclimatize to the reality of my changing mind-body at this time. Um, you could call it a male menopause. But to me now, there are complete different uh, quality of, of feeling and thinking. I'm less inclined to... Uh, travel all over the place and be vibrantly from six in the morning till ten at night working 
I, I really want, uh, what I recognize now, is to pull back a little in terms of being so physically active and to start to recognize that there's something refined that I want to cultivate a bit more. I want to awaken deeper and deeper within while still having the fulfillment and the joy of offering to those who want it this great wisdom. Instead of getting embroiled in the anxieties and fears and delusions about life, we become more accepting. It's about pulling back into yourself, developing a greater awareness of your body, specifically becoming in touch with your body where having learnt about self-awareness and that type of thing I certainly believe that love is the best medicine and I'm not talking about being in love I'm talking about self-love, how we give, how we receive love, how we reject love how specifically we love ourselves and love others Our circle of love, the sharing of vows and exchanging of rings, is but a token of the love in our hearts that need not be spoken. Patiently waiting for you and me to meet, this was the love that would make us complete. We knew then it was our love. Today, as we become man and wife, embracing our love and embracing our life, completing our circle of love, pure and true, that is forever in me and forever in you because this love is our love, so true love, so pure love. This is your love and my love, and it is our love for sure love. Mary, could you tell us how do you keep yourself youthful and healthy? in your golden years? Mm, well, I think a lot has to do with your beginnings, in a way. And I think I had a very good beginning. My parents were healthy and intelligent and loving people. So that was a plus for me. Um, I grew up in the country, so I had a lot of freedom and was well fed. During the war, too, there was no sugar, which was probably good. Uh, no biscuits, nothing like that. Cakes, nothing like that. So that was a start. And now, as I get older, I've always exercised. I love walking, so I, I, I like to walk every day. Um, so, you know, sometimes I'll walk four miles, sometimes I'll walk two, sometimes I might only get time to walk one, but I'll walk every day. I eat quite well, you know, I mean, I eat carefully in the sense that I don't eat rubbish. And um, I take a vitamin, a monthly vitamin. I think that's a help too. You did the Camino walk just a few years ago. Yeah. How old were you when you did that walk? Um, and just remember, I was, think I was 73. Yeah, I was 73. I did limp into Santiago itself, I have to admit. Literally limped in. I dance tango, I cycle, I walk, climb a few mountains, and perhaps that helps to keep me fit and young at heart. I'm reading an awful lot more. People who make CDs very often just need me to sing a harmony on it, so I'm doing a little bit of that as well. It's hard to think of everything when you ask me, but my days are still quite full. We've learned to respond to everything. We've learned to react to everything in life in a conditioned way. We've learned the same pattern over and over and over again. The first thing that I would always say to people is take a breath and breathe right down into your heart. Relax the shoulders, take the time and then wait and see does something different come up? Does something come up from the heart by way of an answer? So the main piece of advice then centres around coming into the present. We're always living in the past. We're always hoping around the future. But it's about coming into the present, 
It's this moment in time to which I don't actually have any answers. I know that I know nothing. I have no solution to a particular problem at this point in time. But at least if I take the time, if I stop reacting, if I recognize that my reactions are simply a uh, conditioning, if I let all of that go, relax, 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 come into the heart and then see what happens. When we dance, we dance in the moment. We, we need to have that in the moment time to concentrate on the music and where we are and our partner. And therefore, that does sustain me in my life. I indulge my passion, which is the big thing. Uh, from the moment I get up to the moment I get myself into bed, I have so much work to do that the mind boggles. Uh, I'm going to have to live to be a thousand before I can get out everything that I need and want to do. I go for my walk roughly three miles a day. I make sure I, I get that walk in. All my holidays now are all to do with workshops and, and courses. At the moment, I'm living as full a life as I possibly can. I try and eat healthily. I, I, I try and exercise as much as I can. I, I try and make sure that I get at least nine hours a night. At this point in my life, I actually know what will make me feel not well. I know the foods that disagree with me. I know, for example, that when I need to sleep, I sleep. So I'm very flexible about time. I'm not bothered about having to fit into a particular mould. So I can make a choice. I like to be well. I like to feel well. I like to feel focused. I like to be alert. I like to be energised. aged 42 that was a time when when things turned for me something inside me wasn't satisfied and I needed to find another way and it was a difficult time but over time as you carry your life on you find yourself getting into other areas which nurture you and help you to continue and it does bring you which is the main positive thing about this is that brings you into an awareness that you never had before it brings you more into yourself and a, a more of an understanding of being. If mind and body are balanced, you express all that is good. However, any imbalance blocks and that inner being is prevented from full manifestation and expression. When we're in our middle years, maybe 25 to 50, it's a time for fulfillment and activity. But after 50, our bodies are more sensitive and we need to take better care of them, be more restful, have a, a better routine, eat properly, nourishing foods. And particularly after 75, the actual uh, routines that we live in, the foods that we eat, are more gentle. By keeping the body balanced at this time, when it's growing a little bit more sensitive, we allow the mind to retain increasing integration and increasing connection with that inner potential of our own pure, unbounded, absolute, eternal, immortal being. I think knowing what your own creative ability and strength are is very important. I think that we come into the world with a couple of gifts and to come to know what your own gifts are is a great thing. And then to be able to work through those particular gifts with other people, to keep that focus, that particular energy in life and to recognize that we complement each other enormously. I would sort of see myself as a, a teacher 
I like that idea of in encouraging people to be their best self because everybody has this goodness within them. Something that I would be very interested in is to inspire the younger generation to be the best they can be, to try to follow their heart and to do what they love. Nowadays there's such an emphasis on money, but I think money will come if you do what you love, do what you feel in your heart God wants you to do, and if you do that you will be really happy and you live a fulfilling life. John O'Donoghue has written a poem called A Morning Offering. The last little verse of it is, Let me have the courage today to live the life that I would love, to postpone my dream no longer, but do what I came here to do and waste my life on fear no longer. That's what it means for me to live a full life. In the Celtic tradition, it was about following Shlina Fíorna, the way of truth. And one of the great marks of a warrior in the Irish tradition was truth in your heart. Truth in your heart. And to be living from that place of truth is what it is for me to live a full life. And that's to have fun, to live in community with your neighbours, to be able to grieve. And a full life is to embrace all of that. Because unless you embrace the pain and the grief and the darkness, you cannot live your joy. The, the prophet in Khalil Gibrani says, joy and sorrow are always sitting on the side of the bed beside each other. If you don't embrace your sorrow, you can't embrace your joy. And I think we live in a society that very definitely tries to sidetrack sorrow and darkness. And that's the great thing about growing older. The people who grow old graciously are the people who have embraced their grief and their darkness. And they break through, and I have done it many times, break through into a whole new springtime. And that's the secret of growing younger towards death, is to embrace the pain, work with the pain, heal it, and then you come out into a new springtime. I wouldn't like to change anything. Oh, I'm truly delighted to be the work that I'm doing now. I, I just thank the Lord for this, you know, that getting me into this. I know it was my dad when he went to heaven. He saw to this. And I love my work and I'm and my life also is religious. And I wouldn't want to change it for anything. I'm truly happy. And I feel full of life. Eighty or oh eighty. I do feel full of life. <laughs> So you're going to practice reflexology till the very last day? I will, please God, Miss Best Mother. And I hope to be driving when I'm 96. I would be inspired from passion, from commitment to passion. Tango was a great outlet for passion because I could uh, ask somebody to dance and now we could share a sensitivity and a passion in a boundary so that we could share this together, feel the sensuality over the dance and then after the dance you can say thank you very much and then you dance with somebody else and you can relive all the passion and sensuality all over again. And at the end of the night you now can go home and feel very good about yourself very good about the people that you've danced with and that will really keep you going. So you can keep dancing and keep doing this as long as your legs will carry you and that will give you the passion and the sensuality and your lust for life right up until the day you die. But being totally interested in what I do, I love the work that I do, the spiritual side of things. I love the Druid ceremonies and ritual. You just move into that space that is a very sacred 
honored space. So it's just loving what you do. I love what I do. It's almost as if you become kind of calm and you're content, I think. It's all about being. It's all about being in your own space, being still, enjoying whatever comes into your presence. And let everything in your presence be a guest, be a welcome guest. Enjoy the sunsets, enjoy nature, enjoy being, enjoy the fresh air. Enjoy a, a smile, a laugh, taste life, enjoy it. It's all very simple. It isn't what you do that matters, it's the way you do what you do. When you meet a challenge in your life, you may focus on the fear, the obstacle, or you may focus on the outcome. Remember how strong you are. All the challenges you have already moved through you are more powerful than you can ever imagine. Breathe. Feel the sacredness of your breath. Remember that each breath is an opportunity for you to start again with new energy, new potential, new positivity. Whatever happened before this moment is gone, never to return. Today, is a new beginning. You can start again, right here, right now. No matter how old you are or whatever happened in your life before this moment, you have the power to create a new life for yourself. A life in which you play the central role, where you are the main actor on the stage of your life, where no matter your circumstances physical, financial, emotional, spiritual. You are in charge of your life. Allow yourself to cast your mind back to a time long before this time. A time when you still allowed yourself to dream. What did you used to dream about? If you were free to do whatever you really want to do, what would you do? What is in your heart? If this was the last thing you could do, what would it be? What is the one thing you want to do with your life before it's over? There's always something wonderful that you can do right here, right now. You are listening to Inspiring Elders, a 13 parts documentary produced and presented by Marie-Angeline Lascaux with the support of the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland. This program featured Anna Chu, Tom Wynn, Fred Walker, Dr. Don Brennan, Joe Cluxton, Mary Brady, 
Leslie Andelman, Lucy Johnson, Eilish Kelly, Dr. Eric Dilworth, Gabrielle Kirby, Dolores Whelan, Sister Rachel, and Annette Peard. The music on this program is from Seamus Brown, and you can find out more about his music on www.brotherseamus.ie. If you want to get in touch with any of the contributors, you can contact us through www.springintolife.ie. Tune in again next week for our last program and the conclusion to Inspiring Elders.